Hello, my name is Gary Cundiff. I am a third year PhD student at Mississippi State University under the guidance of Daniel Reynolds. And I'm going to <clears throat> present a presentation on the evaluation of sequestration of dicamba and sprayer hoses. With our new transgenic herbicide tolerant crops coming onto the market, we do see benefits to producers with more alternative weed controls. Uh, decreased cost and helping with resistant issues with different modes of action. But we also see increased concern for issues such as herbicide drift, volatilization, and sprayer contamination in particular. When we have these susceptible and synthetic oxen resistant crops interspersed, there may be a high probability for application mistakes. And to compound that problem, synthetic oxens are extremely difficult to clean from spray equipment. These problems may also occur, especially considering that glyphosate has been shown to be very effective at dissolving plant growth regulating herbicide residues in a sprayer, on a sprayer, and around a sprayer. Dicamba has a dissociation constant or pK of 1.9. The way in which ammonia works uh, and what we've been told in the past on the label and um, by other consultants is that you want to use ammonia to clean the tank. Well, what it does is it increases the pH, which will increase the solubility of the compound. But considering the dicamba has a disassociation constant of 1.9, which is very low, once you add it to the tank, it should already be disassociated. So adding ammonia essentially shouldn't help the process. Dicamba has a water solubility of 4,500 milligrams per liter, which is fairly high. Our hypothesis are, um, will agriculture hose types differ with respect to injury, yield reduction, height reduction, and residual or parts per million when dicamba is sequestered? Will clean out procedures differ with respect to hose type when dicamba is sequestered? Therefore, the objectives of our study were to develop a methodology to assess different clean out procedures on different hoses and clean out methods. We also wanted to determine if dicamba retention will differ among various hose types and clean out procedures. Materials and methods for our infield applications, we used Clarity and Roundup WeatherMax. Both chemicals were used in the same trial. Initially, all lines were filled with Clarity at 16 fluid ounces per acre and Roundup WeatherMax at 28 fluid ounces per acre. Those lines were then incubated for 48 hours. After the 48 hour incubation period, the lines were flushed and cleaned with one of two different methods, a water clean out and an ammonia clean out. Both clean outs were left to incubate for 24 hours, then flushed. We had five different hose types, all one half inch inside diameter. Four of the hose types are offered by John Deere and one is offered by the local co-op. Uh, all hose types are different in chemical makeup, uh, especially on the inner wall, uh, we have anything from a PVC to a polyethylene to a PVC polyurethane blend and a synthetic rubber. This is the this is how we actually sequestered uh, the solution within the hoses. We had quick couplers on both ends of the hoses. All lines were left empty for 48 hours after final cleanout flush. Spray lines were then filled with Roundup WeatherMax at 28 fluid ounces per acre and incubated for 48 hours. Our experimental layout was a two-factor factorial arrangement of treatments, with factor A being hose type and factor B being cleanout procedure. We replicated this three times. Our plot sizes were 12.6 feet by 40 feet, and the center two rows of our four-row plots received the treatment. We used soybean as a bioindicator to assess cleanout efficiency. Uh, we had two sites in 2013, uh, one in Starkville and one in Brooksville, and our applications were made at the R2 growth stage. We used a two-row boom, TTI 110015, and applications were made at 15 gallons per acre. We took visual ratings 7, 14, 21, and 28 days after treatment. Yield was taken and percent yield reductions were calculated. We use SAS 9.3 and Proclimix. This is an example of the injury that we saw with our black co-op hose. Uh, you can actually see some epinasty uh, within the stems and you can actually see some leaf cupping within the plot. And this is throughout the entire plot we do see this injury. 
This is the type of injury that we observed with the green hose from John Deere. Um, you can see a, a lot of epinasty within the plot. may not be able to see it that well with this picture, but we do have a lot of leaf cupping and epinasty in this plot. We did see significant injury based on hose type 28 days after treatment where we had our black co-op hose and our green John Deere hose showing the most amount of injury when compared to all other hoses. Our blue polyethylene hose from John Deere proved to be the greatest hose when eliminating the sequestration of dicamba within itself. For conclusions for our field study, we visual observations did show significant differences with injury based on hose type four weeks after treatment. No differences based on clean out method, so water and ammonia did not differ. We didn't have any differences in yield or percent yield reduction based on hose clean out or hose by clean out. We also ran a green, greenhouse study in 2014. We did two runs in the greenhouse in the fall of 2014. For this study, it was similar to the field study, uh, although we did use Ingenia in this one. We used Ingenia and Roundup Weathermax. Both chemicals were used in the same trial. All lines were filled with Ingenia at 16 fluid ounces per acre and Roundup Weathermax at 28 fluid ounces per acre. We incubated that for 48 hours. After the 48 hour incubation period, lines were then flushed and cleaned with one of three different methods for this trial. We added a no clean out, a water clean out, and ammonia clean out. All lines were left empty for 48 hours after final clean out flush. Spray lines were then filled with Roundup Weathermax at 28 fluid ounces per acre and incubated for 48 hours. After the final incubation, we did collect a, a 10 mil solution and we used that and extracted that for analytical analysis later at the University of Tennessee. The remaining solution was poured into 354 milliliter bottles. We also added a rate titration to this study. So we had 19 treatments in a randomized complete block, all magnitude 2 factor factorial. So 15 treatments were the hose by clean out, 3 clean outs by 5 hose types, and we added 4 treatments of known working solutions. So we had a 1x, a quarter x, a 164x, and a 1256x of Ingenia. Our experimental layout, like I said, was a randomized complete block, augmented 2 factor factorial. Uh, we replicated this three times. We had four plants per plot. Soybean was used as a bioindicator to assess cleaning efficiency, and applications were made at 15 gallons per acre in a spray chamber. We made these applications at the V3 growth stage. Uh, we took visual ratings at 3, 5, 7, and 14 days after treatment, and we did collect dry matter 21 days after treatment. Analytical samples were run using HPLC at the University of Tennessee and we used SAS 9.3 GLM for the randomized complete block and proc for the factorial arrangement of treatment. These are results we saw 14 days after treatment. Um, this has the rate titration along with all of the other clean outs uh, by hose type on the x-axis. And you can see that we had a far less injury with our blue polyethylene hose when compared to all other hoses. Our rate titration does show a, a nice curve to it. Um, we do see injury with the no clean out in um, a lot of the hoses that are comparable to the 164x rate. When we take the titration out, we do see a little clearer picture of what's going on within the hose types themselves and the clean out within those hose types. We see that the blue polyethylene hose shows less retention than all other hoses when it comes to injury 14 days after treatment. For our dry matter weight, we, we did have significant differences based on hose type where we had green and black hose showing less dry matter weight when compared to the check and um, 
the rate titration was thrown in there uh, just as a, a visual observation and a contrast to what we're seeing with the hose type, but uh, that was not run on the analytical analysis. For our analytical results, we see almost the same picture that we see with our injury where we see our green hose, no clean out, showing the highest amount of parts per million retained which would go back to the field study where our green hose was the worst hose and then second our black hose um, you can tell that the blue hose the polyethylene hose retains the least amount of uh, dicamba analytes within it when compared to all other hoses and that would be representative of what we saw in field and in greenhouse with our injury it was very very little injury with that hose um, again water and ammonia does not differ when it comes to um, clean out uh, we saw that in field and we also saw that within our greenhouse study so the conclusions for the greenhouse study and overall uh, our polyethylene hose showed significantly less injury and less retention of the dicamba analyte than other ag hoses but at over three dollars a foot is it worth it we didn't have any difference between the water and ammonia clean out overall and dry matter differences were based on hose type future research uh, we would like to add hose types ethylene propylene diene monomers epdm and comparing to the polyethylene which they're essentially the same chemical makeup of hose type but we would like to compare those two we would like to add more clean outs including detergents um, we like to take tissue samples to analyze parts per million compared to rate titrations for determination of yield loss and field applications. I'd like to thank Mississippi Soybean Promotion Board for their funding, Mississippi State University, BASF, Dr. Dan Reynolds, Dr. Thomas Mueller, Amber Etchison, Bo Varner, Graham Oakley, and Ryan Edwards for their, all of their support and help.